Hello, welcome to Harpala. I'm Craig Tyler. Uh, Harpala started in 2018. It's on an old historic Finnish farm in Kainu in Finland, built in 1868. 2018 started Harpala Company. We have three main parts, so we're accommodation, a restaurant and a brewery. So today we're going to be concentrating on the brewery part of Harpala for a small brew tour, showing you around what we do and how and when. Welcome to the restaurant part of Harpala. This restaurant is 80 years old. It's an old dairy farm. Uh, in the building of it, we use local ingredients and that's something that we try to follow through through the whole of Harpala Company. In the accommodation side, in the restaurant and in the brewery, we always try to use local ingredients. So one of the special experiences and unique experiences in Harpala is that you can see the beer being made in the brewery from the restaurant as you eat. Follow me, let's go to the brewery. So welcome to the brewery barn. It's not quite as old as the restaurant. This was built in the 1970s. Uh, and before it was a brewery, there were cows in here. And then it was a tractor shed. And then in 2017, it became Harpler's Brewery. As I mentioned, Harpler is on an old farm, so we're very lucky to have land around us and our future plans are to grow our own malts, which will help define the flavour of this local geology. So recipe building at Harpler, we always take a beer style and think about what Finnish ingredient or historical cultural element would best fit that beer style. So on brewery day, we have our grain bill set up here. It's normally about 200 kilos, they're full uh, grains at this point we put them through the grinder which then travel up the auger and into the mash tun so the mash tun this is a thousand litre kit or a 5.5 barrel kit so it's a thousand litres we actually on the end of once it's all been packaged a few weeks later it's actually only about 850 litres but it's called a 5.5 barrel kit which translates to a thousand litres so in this part we've got the, the malt, malt grain coming in and this is our hot liquor tank, so a hot water tank. This holds 1,300 litres. And on the mash, when we're mashing in, it's about 200, litres, uh, 200 kilos of malt and about 500 litres of hot water. So with the mash tun, what we're trying to do is take all of the sugar out of the grain. This is about 80% efficient. So we'll take 80% of the sugars out of the grain. And we do that by steeping. So there's no heating elements in here. All the heating elements are only in the hot water tank and we just control that by pouring in water at about 70 degrees, depending on the recipe, mixed with the mashed grain. We leave it in there for about an hour to steep. So once we've had uh, one hour of steeping in the mash tun, we start to transfer the wort through the louter and into the kettle. Once, once we've transferred the first 50 litres, then we start to a process called sparging, which is where we wash fresh water, the remaining of the 700 litres left in the hot water tank, through the mash bed. So the idea is we're washing the sugar out through the bottom. There's a false bottom in here which allows the grain to stay in and the wort to come out from the bottom and into the kettle. So once we're starting to collect the wort, we're going up through the, the kettle and we normally end up just over a thousand litres. This has got capacity for 1,200, but in reality, it's normally about 1,000 or 1,100 liters. And the whole time we're going up here, this is where we're measuring more closely the gravity of the wort. So each recipe has its own target gravity, which we hope to get around 1,000 liters uh, to maximize the efficiency of the brew kit. Depending on the recipe, it will have a different target gravity, and it's really important that we hit that so we're accurate and consistent on the weeks later when we hit our final alcohol content. So once we've hit our target gravity, we then start the boil, which is normally about one hour. Uh, at this point, we're on the boil, every hour we lose about 40 liters out through the top of the chimney. Uh, and at this point, we then start to add hops. So there's generally two times we add hops at the start and at the end. If we add them at the start, that's gonna add more bitterness to the flavor. Um, and then if we add them at the end, that's gonna add more aroma. So 
if you imagine a tea or a coffee that's overcooked for a long time it's much more bitter and if you just have it in there for a couple of minutes it's more about flavor and it's the same thing with hops so this here is the whirlpool function okay so at the end of the boil we normally put to switch this on for two to three minutes and it will start to push around the whole thousand liters inside and we can look in through the top and just when we see the surface breaking into a whirlpool that's when we know the whirlpool is working and that helps to grab it, all the proteins and unwanted hops that we don't want and it will set, settle them down after and once, once we've done that then we can start to transfer the beer over to the fermentation vessels. So we're transferring the beer across now it's really important we've got a thousand litres here approximately at about 100 degrees which is really hot now we need to crush that temperature down to about 20 as fast as possible to stop any bitterness coming through and also we want to get it across so that we can add the yeast now yeast doesn't like to be anything much above 27 so it's really important that we get that temperature down so we put it through a post heat exchanger and this works by putting hot beer at 100 degrees in one side and it comes out at 20 and we do that by pushing cold water in through the other side and the hot cold water then comes out as hot water at about 70 degrees now this is quite clever on this kit because it recycles that hot water so all the energy we've used in here in the kettle to boil or most of the energy we've used we then recycle, capture that energy and put it back into this hot water tank which is now empty because we've been using all the water and we bring that back in this is 1300 litres and it collects the heat and the water that we've used ready for the next day which is about 70 degrees which we use in the mash for the next day of brewing so we've collected uh, the wort, added in the yeast we should have a thousand litres hopefully about uh, and the reaction starts to happen almost immediately so the next day we should have this air trap bubbling nicely that lets us know that fermentation has started and it will be about 10, 10 days to two weeks for the primary fermentation so after primary fermentation is finished we then move on to secondary fermentation so if we've got a dry hop beer like a pale ale or an IPA Indian pale ale we transfer and add more hops if not then we clip the yeast out the bottom and start to prepare this for uh, packaging day so conditioning this is our packaging line so on packaging day we bring the beer over empty bottles go in labels go on the bottles nice and quickly and smoothly hopefully then over my shoulder here we have the filling machine 300 to 500 bottles an hour and finally the capper so that's the short Harpola brewery tour thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the future bye bye Thank you.